Today, guys, we're looking at still one of the biggest debates in resistance training. Today, we're looking at free weights versus machines, and which is better for muscle growth. Now, in any given gym, you're gonna find two camps supporting one or the other. So first, let's hear them out and see where each are coming from. First, camp free weights. Typical things you'll hear from this camp to support their viewpoint is, free weights are functional, machines are not. Machines don't strengthen your surrounding stabilizing muscles. Free weights increase strength better. Free weights cause more muscle damage, therefore causing more muscle growth. Now, over to camp machines. This camp is typically coming in with, machines provide more constant tension throughout the movement range. Machines are better to target and hit a select specific muscle group. With free weights, it's easier to compensate and lose the load from off the targeted muscle. With machines, it's not. Machines are less demanding on the central nervous system, therefore supporting recovery better, in turn supporting muscle growth more efficiently. And you can more effectively and more safely go to failure using machines over free weights. So, both camps are coming in swinging with some decent points, but the way we're going to determine who's packing more weight in their arguments, and in turn which is better for muscle growth, is with a stack up. First of all though, before we stack them up against each other, the most important thing to understand in all of this is when it comes to gaining muscle, it's all about triggering the body's physiological response known as protein synthesis, which is basically the body's process for building and developing new lean muscle tissue. That fact that protein synthesis is the all and everything can't be argued with or denied by either the free weight or machine supporting camps. So with that in mind, how we'll do this is stack each camp up against a number of commonly known and accepted protein synthesis muscle growth triggers and basically find out who does it best. So first of all, muscle fatigue. Here, we're referring to performing a set of repetitions to the point of complete muscular failure. Understand, with each repetition that you perform of a particular exercise, you're fatiguing more and more muscle fibers. As they fatigue, this forces your body to recruit more fibers so it can continue to perform the required contractions over the continuing repetitions. Once you have reached complete failure on the set, you would have been trying to maximally activate as many muscle fibers as your body effectively could tap into to generate the required force. In turn, stimulating those successfully recruited fatigue fibers to grow. So, who reduces muscle fatigue more effectively and fully? Free weights or machines? Well, the winner of the first comparison, machines are superior in this pathway. Why? Two reasons. First, going to failure greatly increases the neurological demand of an exercise. As such, going to failure on exercises with a lower neurological demand is less taxing on your central nervous system. Both isolation and compound exercises on machines are the best option when going to complete failure and reaching complete fatigue. With machines, you achieve this muscle fatigue trigger without overtaxing your central nervous system. Now, I'm not saying fatigue shouldn't be reached on free weights. I personally do it regularly and have many of my online clients doing the same. But when considering and minimizing central nervous system stress, machines do win. Now, the second reason, on machine exercises, there will be less potential for load transfer than there is with free weights. The more fatigued you become in a set, the more you'll tend to compensate with muscles other than the ones you're targeting. It's easier for the load percentage to start transferring over into other muscle groups to help support and perform the lift, not what we're after if targeted muscle growth is our goal. So, machines take the first score on the board. Next hypertrophy trigger we'll look at is muscle damage or muscle trauma. Now you probably already know that when muscle fibers undergo high levels of mechanical tension and are stretched while they're producing force under load, muscle microtrauma can occur in the muscle fibers themselves and in turn spark muscle growth. What greatly contributes to this is how in sync your target muscle fibers contract and relax in unison how coordinated they work together. The better they work together, the more power is generated. When they work in unison, it's great from a performance point of view, but not so much from a muscle building point. See, the thing is, the more unbalanced the load is displaced over the involved muscle fibers, the more actual muscle trauma occurs. When the load you're lifting is unevenly displaced across involved muscle fibers, some of those fibers will experience greater load tension, ultimately induced with more damage. 
When you perform a brand new exercise or one you haven't done in a while, your muscle fiber coordination is poor and therefore the load isn't displaced equally. This leads to more muscle damage. So who takes this hypertrophy pathway out? Free weights or machines? Free weights do. What makes free weights superior in this pathway is because free weight lifts will never be as controlled as machines. No matter how experienced you are, muscle fiber coordination requirements are always more demanding with free weights. That's simply because the plane of movement isn't locked in path. With machines, your fiber efficiency is greater, therefore reducing how much damage the exercise generates on the fibers themselves. So free weights jump on the board, taking out the hypertrophy trigger known as muscle damage. The next hypertrophy mechanism we're stacking free weights and machine exercises up against is metabolic stress or lactic pooling. The presence of lactic acid itself is a mechanism for muscle growth. You know what I'm talking about. That burn, that accumulating lactic acid that we all know and love or hate. Well, it does a heap more than just give you that feeling that you're actually working. The accumulation of lactic acid itself increases stem activity, contributes to muscle cell swelling, and decreases myostatin, helping lead to muscle growth. All these factors support anabolic responses, stimulating new lean muscle development. How this specifically occurs is with the buildup of lactic acid in the targeted trained muscle and restricting it as much as possible from exiting during the session. Who takes this round? Machines. There's a couple of different methods to achieve this lactic pooling, but the most common is the manipulation of tension duration and the use of shorter rest times between sets. Now you can have short rest times with either machines or free weights, so that in itself isn't a factor, but it's the manipulation and use of tension across long periods of time under constant load, keeping the targeted muscle constantly engaged, that's a different factor here. Long periods of tension allow lactic acid to build up, can be achieved with either free weights or machines, but it's the result of the accumulating fatigue and the lactic's effect on your muscle fibers contractions that will kick in and likely cause a breakdown in form at some stage throughout your set. Now, which would you rather, a breakdown in form under a heavy ass barbell squat or a breakdown in form on a horizontal pin loaded leg press? Purely from a safety point of view, machines take this one out. So with that score 2-1 to the guys in the machine camp, do we have an undisputed winner? Are machines superior? And are the guys in the free weight camp having to eat humble pie right now? Well, no, that's still not the case. Truthfully, the only winner here is the guy happily using both when the requirement calls for it. Understand there is no right or wrong here. It's all about selecting the best method for the specific hypertrophy trigger that you want to tap into at the particular stage and focus in your program. For instance, when the focus is all on producing large volumes of muscle trauma as the primary trigger for growth, then the biggest percentage of your program's exercise selection should be free weights. Likewise, if you're at a phase in your program where metabolic stress is the primary mechanism, then the use of machines should take precedence. Take home point here. Be sure the program you're following is using the right exercise prescription for the right type of hypertrophy trigger that you're trying to tap into. If the program you're following carefully accounts for that, then you'll always be using both free weights and machines optimally for muscle growth. Right, first of all, guys, I am extremely sorry. It has been a week and or one day behind the, uh, the YouTube post schedule that I was trying to stick to. <sighs> Guys, I'm in the process, it's, it's extremely full on at the moment for me, I'm in the process of launching what I've been working on for a number of months, a new online training, nutrition coaching um, platform that has been all time consuming and because we are behind the deadlines, it has just taken 24 seven of me. Uh, so that is why this upload is late. The next upload, we're still aiming for seven days, um, every seven days uploading one, so hopefully I can pull that one together. But like I said, it is full on at the moment. I'm launching something very, very exciting that I believe will change the online training game massively. Um, so stay tuned for that. I'll tell you some more details, but you know, hopefully, fingers crossed, it will be this week that we launch, as long as all the bugs and glitches are fixed on the website. Um, anyone know any good software developers? Because I need them. Um, anyway guys, stay tuned, thank you for tuning in, and boom, seven days, seven days please, I'll have the next one up for you. Thanks guys.